In today's Quick Thursday tip, we're going to talk about the combo box and how to set its default selected items. We're also going to look a little bit about how the table structure works, the record structure works, and just help you guys understand this control that sometimes has its mind of its own. Should be fast, should be fun. But first, here's our intro! Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911, those guys, and today, we're going to look at the combo box and more specifically about the combo box setting default selected items. So I've done a whole video on that. I'll make sure that it's linked somewhere. But what I want to do today is just concentrate on this idea that getting the combo box to set itself to a default that you want is a lot of times more difficult than you wanted. So let's switch over to my desktop. Let's just play with this goofy little control and see if we can make it happy today. All right. So I've got a completely blank app. I just created the app. And the very first thing we'll do is going to be like, hey, insert, input, and a combo box. And like I said, I'm assuming you have some familiarity with it. You're just here to figure out a little bit better how to set this thing. And to that end, the first thing I'm gonna do is we're just gonna throw a data source at it. So instead of using this goofball, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna add some data. I'm gonna search for SharePoint. There it is, and connect in. Now keep in mind, we're doing this with SharePoint as our data source, but we do not, it is not dependent on SharePoint. This is just the easiest one for me to demo for you guys. And in a minute, we're actually gonna handcraft a bunch of stuff, which will be even way more unique. So we're gonna pull in my Power Apps videos and then my good old famous employees list. We'll connect it in. And after a second, it's in there. So then now we'll make sure we click on the combo box. We'll say use employees. And then you'll notice right away that it doesn't show a usable field. So I'm just gonna say show people's first names. You'll also remember you'll get the little yellow thing here. That's because the search functionality of combo boxes is not delegable to SharePoint. Not talking about that today, but just wanted to make sure you knew that's why the yellow triangle is there. Okay, so then if we hit the drop down and hold down the Alt key, cool, we got some names in here. So now the first question you guys are always like, hey, how do I get this to default? So you click on the box, you're like, well, every other control on the planet, you use default. Well, guess what? Default does nothing for combo boxes, so don't even look at it. You need to go straight to default selected items. And this should be your clue that it behaves a lot different than you want, right? Because if we thought about a drop down, if I wanted it to default to Chewy's record, I would literally just type in Chewy and it'd be like, cool, but that's not gonna work here. It gives me an error. And if you hover, it's gonna give you a hint. Expected a table value. So default selected items has to either be a table or a record, right? It doesn't tell you it can be a record, but it actually can just be a record. So that means that in order for this to work, you can never just throw in your text like this. You have gotta get a record. Now this is where a lot of people struggle with like, but what record, okay? So the, the key message here is go back to your items, right? Whatever your items is, so in this case, it's my SharePoint employees list, but if this was a hard-coded items, if it was a, you know, a collection, whatever your items is, the record has to come from the same data set. So that's, that's, that's the hardest first part of this. And we're gonna come back to this in a minute. We're gonna put in some hard-coded data to really make this a little trickier. But right now, we have employees. So then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back to default selected items, and so this can't be this, but if we wanted just a single match, we could use lookup, which returns a record. And we say lookup in employees, where first name, wherever first name is, first name equals Chewy. And so that's a query that gets Chewy's record. And as soon as Power Apps is done, you can see that the control defaults to that. So you can use a lookup, and because it, that lookup returns a record, and that record matches the data set that is in the items property dot connected, okay? So that's the first challenge that a lot of you have is this idea that, you know, how do I get that one? In this case, I've got to do a lookup. Now, what if though with, the, with uh, the combo box, you can select multiple, right? So if I choose Chewy and Daniel, so how would I make Chewy and Daniel both default? Well, lookup returns a record, one match. So that's not going to work. So then now what I'm gonna to have to do is I need to do some type of filter. And so typically that's gonna look something like this, right? Because filter returns a table of data and default selected items can be a table of records that match your items. So filter employees. And so here, you know, I probably don't even have a good filter. Well, all right, we're just gonna make this work. So I would say filter the records where first name equals Chewy or first name First name is such a pain because it has a space in it. This is why I hate spaces. First name equals Daniel. We do that and that. 
And so after that processes, it hits the two matches for us. So we have managed to set that. Now you look at that, you're like, well, Shane, but I got like seven or whatever, right? It doesn't have to be exactly that. I just use that because that was like what was on top of my head. Say that I want all the executives selected, right? I could, I could have said where department equals executive. Executive, I got to spell executive correctly. Fun thing, I didn't learn to spell business until I was in business school. I'm bad at spelling. Anyway, so there you go. And those are the four people in our company that are marked as executive in my fake list of data. Filter employees by department. So whatever filter criteria you want, okay? So that's that's the basics. That's that's pretty straightforward, but that's the big hump that a lot of people get over. You want to make this more complicated? Of course you do. So remember that you know you could have this uh, default, right? Or, right? This forming would be whatever it is. So for example, we could have done something like maybe we have a let's throw a drop down in here just for giggles. I, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I sometimes get inspired. We're gonna say hey, drop down, use employees. And so then now what I could do is be like, all right, and then show me first name again, because I don't like not seeing first name. There you go. And so what I might do, no, you know what? Instead of first name, I'm going to say, I want to do a distinct. Give me the list of departments, right? That was what we were just playing with. Let's, let's, let's stay on the story, Shane. There you go. So this should show us the distinct departments. Very fun. Go back over here. And so set the default selected to be filter department equals drop down one dot selected dot result. So then now if we change this from executive to IT, we should see, I think, Daniel and Chewy. Yeah, because they're both in IT. Janitorial, I think that's Jeff yeah, and Fausto. There you go. So, right, I, I realize you're not ever going to build the app this way, but what I want you to understand, what I want you to take out of this is a small lesson that how this filter happens doesn't matter because you guys are all of a sudden thinking, well, what if I have it stored in a variable or what if I have it somewhere else? It doesn't matter. Okay, so that's our first one. Ready to make it harder. Let's make it harder. Let's do another drop down or another combo box. Let's pull it down here. And so oh, sometimes you guys, for whatever reason, you might have the data hard coded, right? So you're gonna be like, hey, I want a dynamic table of yes, no, maybe. I don't know why you wanted that in a combo box, but you did. And so when you put this in your combo box, you're like, all right, cool, cool, that, that works, yay. I want to set default selected items here. So you guys immediately roll back to your old style. You're like, hey, I just want to do yes. Right? This doesn't work. Default, no, never, never. Go away. Default selected items. You're like, all right, well, now let's put a yes there. I want to default to yes. No. So then you're like, but Shane, I, how do I get a record? I don't understand. Fair. So what you can do, there's a few different ways to do this one. Is, but at the end of the day, this has to be a record that matches. So you could do something like this. You could build a record on the fly called, um, what is this? This is, wait, no, this is value. Value equals yes, and that's going to work. And you're like, wait, Shane, how does that work? Why does that work? Okay, what do we do? Whenever we question these things, we go back to our items property. Oh, that is not the items property. This is the items property. And so what I want you to do is I want you to select all this. And so Power Apps says that's a table. You knew that. Expand it. That built us a single column table, and the column name was value. So that means that this record is value colon yes, value colon no, value colon maybe. So that is why, because I knew my shortcut syntax, I was able to craft my own record here to do it. All right, ready to see a really cool trick, right? And you guys are probably, I'm probably losing some of you. I apologize, but... You need to start wrapping your heads around this. That's why I'm showing it to you, okay? So what if I wanted to do yes and no? Well, you're like, well, you know, can I do like an or in there or something? No, no. This is what the records look like, so I need two of these records. So you're like, all right, well, then let's just do something like, uh, let's do an and here. I don't know. I don't know what kind of crazy ideas you guys have in your head. This isn't going to work. So we do something like that. Right, Power Apps is like, I don't know what you've done. Okay, if you need two records, what do you call that? You call that a table. So we need to use the table function to make this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the front. We're going to say, hey, table, do something like this. Yes and no are selected. What? What? Now, if you're really tricky, right? You're like, well, Shane, did I have to do that? Nope. You know what you could have done? Yes. No. Oh, square, square. Right? Table, 
two columns, records match, power out, or combo box is happy. So I show you a couple different ways to think about that one because I think that's one of the important lessons to start to take out of this, especially for people that know lots about power apps, is you gotta be able to understand when you see these things and think a little bit deeper, okay? So the next little one here, I know that this is gonna be a little bit longer of a cutie than I usually like to do, but I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna make a variable and say set bar defaults. So say that you're getting the value out of a string, right? So maybe you've got this string, yes, comma, maybe. And you're like, hey, that's where I stored because that's what they chose last time. I wanna have the combo box to default to that. How do I do that? Fair enough, well, let's set the variable because you might be getting this from something like parent.default or from gallery.selected, right? I don't know where you're getting it from, but that is now the value you've got. You got yes and maybe, you wanna set this thing to default to that. So you could do something like this. You could say split var defaults and split it on the comma. That re creates a table called result with yes and maybe. Result yes and result maybe doesn't equal, is not the same as value yes and value maybe. So that doesn't actually get us any defaults, right? When you get it wrong, you just get nothing matched. Okay, ready? Now we're going to say rename columns, rename the result column to value because that's what that thing wants. Boom! Is that neat? So once again, maybe not something you completely are gonna do, but it gets your head wrapped around. Hey, I've got the data shaped this way. I got it from a weird place and it looks funny. How do I get it back to a place that it might work? That could work. You also could have taken all this, you could put it into a collection, that would work. You could put it back into a table like we talked about. There's a lot going on here but I just want you to take that you can do this. The last one I'll show you because this was one that just kind of prompted me to make this video. Um, so the customer, uh, she had a current of her data in a different way. I don't remember the exact scenario. Okay, I took like seven support calls that day, but basically we had to do an in, right? So she had like a string of data and she wanted to match all the records where they were in. So she ended up doing something like this. She said um, filter and then she went back to her items property, right? Because this is where her, this is the table that she wanted to filter. So she said, hey, filter that table. Default selected items. She put that right there. And then she said value, right? So value is the column in there. So check to see if the value is in var defaults. And so this operator gave her a way to, right? So that way she didn't have to split or any of that. She just had that string. Remember var defaults is uh, yes, comma, maybe. So we just look to see, is any of the records, is the yes record in there? It is, so it shows up. Is the no record in there? It's not, it shows up. Is the maybe record in there? It is, and it showed up. So another way to think about this, okay? So I realize that's a lot of, chaos all at once. I think most of you just wanted the first five minutes of this. You probably stopped watching already, but I wanted to kind of go that extra mile because I get a lot of questions about setting default selected values. And at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, making sure that you're returning a record from the items property. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. If you have other ideas, other weird things, other scenarios you want to see me cover like this, I'd be happy to, right? These, these are the videos, that's why I made the whole QD idea, right? I want to make these quick little videos that just let me show something that seems completely arbitrary, but by putting it in your utility belt, you're gonna thank me later. Um, remember, hit the subscribe button, right? And I feel like you guys have been slacking lately on subscribing, so hit the subscribe button for me if you don't mind. And with all that, I think I'm just gonna say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.